Chapter 4, Lesson 8, Essential Question. How do you know you have the correct number of decimal places in your product? Today's lesson is all about making sure that you have the correct number of decimal places in your product. Remember, the product is the answer to a multiplication problem. So you may end up needing to add zeros into your product. I'm missing a line right here, but it basically would say that sometimes your product may not have enough digits to place the decimal point. In these cases, you may need to write additional zeros. Here's the problem. Students are racing typical garden snails and measuring the distance the snails travel in one minute. Chris's snail travels a distance of two-tenths of foot. Jamie's snail travels four-tenths times as far as Chris's snail. How far does Jamie's snail travel? Press pause, take a moment, underline what you are being asked to find, and circle the important numbers. I underlined how far does Jamie's snail travel. That's what you're being asked to find. The important numbers that I circled were two tenths of a foot and four times as far. I crossed out one minute because in this case, the time doesn't really matter. We just want to know the distance. So in this blue box over here, I know that we've already underlined this, but it says using the given information, describe what you are being asked to find. Press pause, take a moment, and fill that out. What are you being asked to find? You should have wrote something similar to the distance Jamie's snail traveled. Now that we have what we're being asked to find and our important numbers, let's move on to actually solving the problem. Our problem is 4 tenths times 2 tenths because it's 4 times as far as Chris's snail and Chris's snail was 2 tenths. So step 1 when multiplying decimals is to just multiply them as whole numbers, ignoring the decimal. Right here, that's what they did. They did 2 times 4 equals 8. Then we need to determine the position of the decimal point in the product. Since tenths are being multiplied by tenths, the product will show what? Hundredths. Because there's one decimal place value, two decimal place values. So we need to have two decimal place values in our answer. So the product will show hundredths. Now, step three is that we need to actually place the decimal point. Are there enough digits in the product? Our product right here is eight, but to show hundredths, we need two decimal place values. That means that we need to write zeros as needed to the left of the whole number product to place the decimal point. So basically that means is that we need to add zeros in front of the 8 until we have enough digits that we can have two decimal places. So there's 8, there's one zero, and then the decimal point. We could have another zero right at the beginning showing no whole numbers, but that one is not absolutely necessary. This first one right before the 8 between the decimal and the 8 is absolutely necessary to make that be 8 hundredths. So that means that Jamie's snail travels a distance of how far? 8 hundredths foot. So let's look at the math talk right here, this box. 
It says, explain how you know when to write zeros in the product to place a decimal point. How do you know? Well, did I have enough digits to have two decimal places with just the answer of 8? No, I needed to add that 0 to make it so I had the correct number of decimal places. So you add zeros when you need more decimal places. Go ahead and turn your page over. Looking at this example, this time we're going to multiply money. We're going to multiply 2 tenths times 30 cents. Again, step one is to multiply as whole numbers, ignoring the decimal. In this case, you need to think. The factors are 30 hundredths and 2 tenths. Factors are the numbers being multiplied. So what are the whole numbers that you will multiply? Write that right here. Ignoring the decimals, you will be multiplying 30 times 2. Step 2 is to determine the position of the decimal in the product. Since hundreds are being multiplied by tenths, the product will show how many decimal places and what is that place value. It will show, well, a hundredth has two decimal places and tenths have one. You add those together, you're going to have three decimal places. So the place value with three decimal places is the thousandths. Let's catch our recording area right over here on the right up with where we are on the left. So if we multiply 30 cents and 2 tenths just like we would the whole numbers of 30 times 2, we're going to ignore the decimal. 2 times 0 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. And then that 2 times 0 would be 2. And then 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. 0 times 0 is 0. I don't necessarily need to write anything else. But looking at step two, we've determined that we need to have three decimal places. Do I have three digits? No, I only have two. So that means we need to look at step three. Step three says place the decimal point. Write zeros to the left of the whole number product as needed. Since the problem involves dollars and cents, what place value should you use to show cents? Before we do that part, let's just do step three. Place the decimal point. It's, we were looking for three decimal places because it's two decimal places and one decimal place, that's the thousandths. We only had two digits, so let's add a zero to the left of the whole number and then place our decimal. So now we can tell that we have one, two, three decimal places. Now, if we look at the second part of step three, it asks, because this involves dollar and cents, what place value should you use to show cents? When looking at money, we never have three decimal places here. So we really use the hundredths when we are working with money, because one penny is one one hundredth of a dollar. It takes 100 pennies to make a dollar. So, oh, got to remember my TH. So, looking at right here, zero six, decimal zero six zero, which is 60 thousandths, we know that this zero at the end isn't necessary. Because it's a zero, it doesn't affect the worth or the value of this six. So this zero, we can just take off. And 
that will give us just the hundredths. So for our answer, two tenths times 30 cents is, we have our dollar sign, our decimal, zero, six hundredths, six cents, six pennies, whatever it you say to where it has the value of six cents. It's always good to remember what you're being asked to find and what, you're, what type of numbers you're working with. We were able to take off that zero because we were working with money. And when working with money, you always only have two decimals in your answer. So let's look at the try this. Two tenths times five hundredths. Work it out in this box, and then what steps did you take to find the product? You can write one, two, three, and if you did more steps than three, you can label those out. So again, do it right here, work it out, and then write down the steps that you did, even if you did them in your head. Write them down. Press pause while you work. Now yours does not have to look exactly like mine, but the answer should be the same. It should end up being 10 thousandths. My steps are I multiplied ignoring the decimal, I counted the number of decimal places needed, I added a zero to the left of my product so I had the correct number of decimal places, and then number four, I placed my decimal point. That's how I came to my answer of 10 thousandths. Turn and look at your share and show problems. Your share and show answers, numbers one, two, and three, they want you to add in the zeros, write in the zeros, think about how many places you need in your answer, how many zero, zeros you need to add, and place your decimal point. In numbers four, five, and six, they just want you to find the product. You may begin. If you got all of these correct, you may go ahead and work on your on your on your own. I want you to look real quick for 7 through 14, you're doing the same thing, you're just finding the product. 15 through 17, you will see that it has an algebra part where it says find the value of n. All they're wanting you to do is find the missing number. So in this case, n is the answer. In this case, n would be is the missing factor. What would you multiply 2 tenths by to get 8 hundredths? And then same thing with 17. What would you multiply n by um, 9 hundredths to get 63 thousandths? Also, work on the problem solving page on the next side. If you got any incorrect, I would like you to look over them and see if you know where you made your mistake. If you still have questions, about it and you're not sure, raise your hand for some assistance. If you made a mistake but you see where your mistake is and you understand why you made it and how to fix it, you may go ahead and work on the on your own problems as well.